Heavenly Father, we are gathered together in the name of Lord Jesus Christ in the first Sunday, 2018, Lord. We want to understand what is the real most blessing only given by God, not but given by the world, Lord. Give us understanding. Let us make be able to hear your words, your voice, Lord, through the words, Lord, so that we find out most blessing from God, not from the lust of flesh, lust of eyes, the pride of life in the world. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I'm going to read this book of Psalm chapter 21 related to that sermon. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall be shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart a desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips, Sarah. For thou put vanished him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it, it him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation, honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fury oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of man. For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischievous, mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, and thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Amen. Okay, let's go back to book of Psalm chapter 1, okay, first chapter related, you know, who is the blessed man? Yeah, let me read, you know. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law adduce he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yes, we are supposed to take, choose one of them, to be righteous or to be wicked. Our choice. God is so equal God, giving same opportunity everyone living in the world. That's why nobody can excuse himself, herself, in the time of judgment in the future. On the sixth day of creation, when God you know, created all things in the earth, God made men and women and blessed them. Blessed them. You know, blessed them. Never cursed them. Blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion of the fish of the sea, and of the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Yeah, the blessing God has given to man is to give birth to children forever, giving them the sovereignty, sovereignty of ruling over the things that God created. That means, you know, God, you know, appointed. The first man, Adam, to be king, ruling over all the creation in the earth. What a wonderful blessing. However, because of the sin of the first man, their blessing was taken away by the devil overnight, one in day, in a day. Then over the last 6,000 years, the earth has been fallen into the hand of the devil and he has become the ruler of all things. After 4,000 years later, God, who created all things, came to the earth in the form of Adam to bring back the earth that was taken away from man. The devil, who tempted the first man, Adam, leading unto sin, tempted even Jesus, the God, manifested in the flesh. He showed Jesus to tempt him and to take possession of this earth forever for his own. You know, devil knew Jesus is the you know, owner of the earth, the Lord God of the earth. That's why if he success. He got a success in tempting even Jesus. You know, the earth shall be for his own forever. It's, you know, kind of, you know, misunderstanding though. So devil taking Jesus up into a high mountain and showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this now, all this power, will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. Yes, from Adam, right? And to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. You know, the devil asked Jesus to worship him. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, how much more easier the devil, you know, ask all the people to worship him. Most people, you know, give up the blessing, even these days, to worship the devil, to have some part of the earth. For the devil's word saying that the kingdom of this world had been handed over to him. That means, you know, at the time of Jesus, 4,000 years ago, right? Jesus did not say that it was not true. He recognized. 
He never said no. Because the man that God created did not obey the word of God, but heard the devil and sinned, he gave up the earth given by God unto the devil to be the slave of the devil. What a miserable thing it is. Most miserable thing in human history. But in the schools, no teacher teach this because they don't know it. Only the church of God is the place to teach you know, this kind of truth. Since then, the devil has given this word to those who worship him and have them become his servants to rule the earth. Therefore, Apostle Paul testified of the powers who have been given authority from the devil. Does he just, you know, send a letter to Ephesian church and said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, it's government, okay? Against powers, powers under government, which is IRS, you know, Homeland Security, CIA kind of powerful organization. And against the rulers of darkness of this world. Yes. Rulers of darkness, you know, doing, you know, tempting people to take a drug, to take alcohol, to take, uh, to commit all kinds of sins. That is the rulers of the darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. Many wicked spirits entered the people, make them rebellious, rebellious, you know, against their parents, rebellious against the world, you know, committing murders, committing all kinds of sins. For reason of devil, you know, principality, the powers, the rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high place. God wanted to restore the blessings which the devil took away through his son, and he made a plan to give it to man again, and he called the man. His name was Abraham. Now he became, he changed the name Abraham. God said to him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God had spoken of blessings that man will receive for the first time after man lost in a paradise. He also said that the blessing of God will be given to all the tribes of the earth through Abraham, and God said, Abraham will be blessing itself. Yeah, God made Abraham a blessing. He's not just a blessed man. He became blessing itself. God has chosen Abraham to send his only begotten son as his seed in the image of man like Adam. His name is Jesus. God sent Jesus Christ to the earth that was taken away by the devil appearing as a man like Adam so that Jesus may overcome the temptation that the first man in the Garden of Eden to remove the sins of the world through his death. He had to die because the sin of the first man and sin of the world to take away sins unto his flesh. Through Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit testified about the blessings that all men will receive in the seed of Abraham and who the seed is. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That's why Jesus hanged on the wooden cross. 
victory. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, just like us, right? Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now receive Jesus Christ by faith, you know, all sins taken away. The Holy Spirit enter our body, our heart. His restoration of man in the image of God, likeness of God again. Brethren, I speak after the manner of man, though it be that a man's covenant. Yeah, if it is confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He said not, and to see this, not plural, okay, not see this, sees as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, singular form, seed, one man, which is Christ Jesus. That means in Christ Jesus, all the nation's people shall be blessed to receive everlasting life. One condition. They only believe in him. His death and burial and resurrection. That's right. The blessing that God gives through Jesus Christ, one of Abraham's seeds, is the promise of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when we are justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we we'll receive the Spirit of God to be the sons of God. Before Adam sinned, he was the son of God too. But after he sinned, he lost the position of his sonship of God. Through the first chapter of the book of Psalm, just we read, right? God spoke of the blessing of them who become children of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, but delight is in the law of the of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. What that means? God speak about the blessed man and the wicked man. In other words, he spoke of a man who has the promise of the Holy Spirit and becomes a child of God and who follows the lust by worshiping the devil who is still ruling the world. Blessed are those who already receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God leads us to all the truth and tells us things that will come before God's children, before us. This is why blessed people do not always look at the world, but look for the truth and are concerned about the blessings that will be revealed in the future, and their only concern is in the word of God written by the Holy Spirit. However, the man who did not receive the Holy Spirit and worship the devil as the first man still lives in the world that is perishing and living as a wicked person before God following the lust of flesh and lust of eyes and pride of life. Jesus spoke through John the Baptist as to how Jesus deal with them that became the sons of God as the grain as well as the chaff without the Spirit of God. Grain means, you know, that they have, you know, Holy Spirit and chaff, nothing, nothing Spirit of God in them. Whose fan, who's Jesus' fan, whose fan is in his hand? And he will thoroughly purge his flaw and gather his wit, great, right, into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with an unquenchable fire. That is called fire. That is called, you know, hell or lake of fire. The scripture is talking about the blessings and judgment that is to come 
in farm. Psalm chapter 1. As to the grain, he said. As to the grain, he said. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. They shall prosper eternally, dwelling with God forevermore when he come again in his glory. And also said to the wicked people, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yeah, God knows the way of righteous, you know. Children of God, anything happens, you know, God knows it. That's the reason we have to rejoice, you know, because God knows our way. The most blessing that the children of God will enjoy is that when the Lord Jesus comes back to take over the world in the future, and a man will regain his sovereignty over the earth that Adam gave up to the devil 6,000 years ago. Even though we are living in this world, in the midst of suffering, hearing the mocking of the wicked. But in that day, we shall be enjoying the glorious life with Christ as his helping spouse, his wife, forever. Therefore, we are able to live a life of meditating the word of God day and night, rejoicing only his words, which contains the words of this promise. That's the reason promise. Apostle Paul justified of these glorious blessings to the saints who had been severely persecuted by the Roman Emperor Nero in Rome. Apostle Paul encouraged them in the midst of persecution. And if children if you, you are saved, that means, if you're children, if you receive the Holy Spirit, right, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heir with Christ. Heir of God means, you know, God owns the whole universe, right? We are the heir of the whole universe. Because Jesus is the only begotten Son, that's why we are his spouse, helping hand. That's why joint heir. If so be that we suffer with him. Yes. The devil attacking the children of God. We suffer. That we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Apostle Paul also testified to the pastor Timothy about the joint heir with Christ. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Yes, we have to make a choice. Suffer with him now to reign with him or deny him. No reign with him in the future. That's right. Jesus Christ, who became a man in the image of Adam, overcame the sins and causes and death that came from the devil and judged the devil on the cross. When he comes again, he will bind the devil, arrest the devil, and become the last Adam to take over the earth and reign by himself. Apostle John saw this sin testified. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. Yeah, dragon is a serpent tempted Adam in the garden of Adam, which is the devil and Satan. Yeah, different name. Devil has many names. Dragon, serpent, devil, Satan and bound him a thousand years 
and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Now he's deceiving nations. He cannot deceive nations anymore when Jesus comes back. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Long time ago, psalmist, a psalmist testified of the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ reigning, who will be ruler of this world. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. It is a matter of time before this world will be done. I bless all of you through the spirit of wisdom revelation and through the opening your eyes of understanding. Be able to see the glorious sin before us so that no more feel sorrow, no more discouragement, but you know, always rejoice in the hope of the Lord. That's your only hope. No hope at all. American dream cannot give you hope. I bless all of you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.